You a big Bill Hicks fan? Uh, that, I think that's how I got into comedy. Same as me. I think I, I, I bet it, uh, I did it before you. <laughs> how old are you, actually? <laughs> are we rolling? Yeah. This is, this is a great way to start. I'm 36. Yeah. So was it, I'm trying to think. It was about 1991. The, the, the Montreal TV show on mm-hmm. Channel 4 was something. Like, we, we, we had, well, no, we had the channels down south a while. We only had, like, RT1 and 2. But then we started to get the channels. But you wouldn't see stand up yeah you'd have like billy Connolly on the late later or something but then i remember seeing bill hicks and suddenly oh my god it's like i've only ever heard folk music yeah and then, <laughs> yeah. And then Jimi hendrix walks on stage well that was it like i i hadn't seen uh a comedian be like cool every com- <laughs> every, my every, all my exposure was like maybe like lee evans or even Billy Connolly's kind of clownish you know like yeah, the yeah, real yeah. silly guys who looked wacky and they looked and then this guy actually the first Bill Hicks thing I seen was in the movie Human Traffic, which I seen by accident just on like Channel Four, and the guy sets down before he goes out and he puts on Bill Hicks. Oh right, he's talking about drugs and then he goes out on a fucking rampage. <laughs> but that was the first. Time. I was like, who the hell's that? You know, because it looked kind of like a rock star. It, it's amazing when your ears get opened like that. Yeah. You know, because it was, at the time, now Steve Wright, who I'm sure you probably discovered yeah. afterwards, just those little droll jokes used to crack, yeah. crack, and Emo Phillips. Yeah. They were all kind of of the same era, but I remember Bill Hicks, they gave him a one-off special. And I had a t- I still have the video somewhere at home. And it's just, I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. I would have to do a bit of Hogan on, on the internet there, but there's, there's one seven-minute set that he does somewhere. And that was whenever I was doing like open spots and stuff. And I was like, yeah. look how much you can do in seven minutes yeah. when you really know what you're doing, you know, <laughs> instead of stumbling it, it, through. It, it, yeah, the writing, it makes it so lean. It's, it's If you're, like, talking to someone about comedy, it's that there's no wasted waffle. It's, yeah. And then it's just, and you realise, oh, that line, that line back there that you thought was just throwaway was to set up this line. And yeah, and he almost had his, because it was like a short spot, he almost just had his head down. Get through. Rip, ripping it out, you know, just not even sort of engaging. He would like look up and do a bit of an Elvis. Like it's it's a terrible thing to say, but it's almost is it better or it's, you know not better is the wrong word, but the fact that he died. I think yeah, and because I mean, was it Chris Rock did the somebody did the routine. Oh, Doug Stanhope did a routine about if he you know he stayed cool because he died, but it would be like everybody loves Hicks or you know he was talking about all the the shit stuff he would have done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he would, but it's a nice, it was a nice routine. But I it think was, he just, you know, like he died probably at an age where, you know, had he started to put out like specials, then he would have disappeared and then he would have had another special. Yeah, another yeah, special. Yeah. He was kind of just like doing variations of the same stuff on yeah, different yeah. things. I, I, that material but he was only like 32 or so, something. Yeah, my, Billy, myself and Kimmel were on this boat and this happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he starts to do all the rich guy material. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was at this five-star restaurant. Al Pacino and... comes in and says to me. <laughs> That's what's weird about Chappelle, like, because everyone's like, oh, he's the greatest comedian alive. But he's doing comedy that only he could do because he is also, a, you know, yeah, a yeah, cultural yeah. icon and an A-lister and very famous. <laughs> he gets away with those stories. And then you see, you know, even like, maybe like Ricky Gervais will slip in some wee thing and you're like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your fucking sweatpants over there. <laughs> I was um, was it uh, I, and I love Jim Jeffries. He's uh, he literally doesn't give a fuck. But he was telling a story. The first time I after he'd had the success, he came back and he was doing Galway, and we're walking. I'm walking him down from one venue to the the Roisin Do for the after night thing, and he's telling me about doing a gig, and Megan Fox was there and dropping. And the next time I met him, he was at a party that Al Pacino and Brad. It was literally, he's. I'm there going, are you gigging in Madame Tussauds? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, and the stories are funny and interesting, and I'm loving hearing them, yeah. but it's still like, wow. It's just a different. You know, it's a different world. Yeah. You know, it's a, and I'm going, I did Jonglers Edinburgh with you to 100 people, yeah. you know, in a half empty room a couple of years ago. But that's just the way, like, you know, I imagine that was in LA, was it? He was, yeah. Like LA, yeah, yeah. like R. McCann got tickets. He bought tickets to like a secret guest at the comedy store in the belly room, which is like 80 seats or something. And he goes, and of course it was Chappelle. I think it was heavily, oh, you know, well, yeah, wink, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, got t- he managed to get tickets for that, got in. It was Chappelle, but he said he was, he was freaking out more about the people in the room. Like Leonardo oh, DiCaprio was in the room. 
was it like John Mayer? There was a bunch of people, like oh, wow. really famous people, just in the front row. And he's just, he said he was more nervous about the fact that he was how just m- like, how much did you pay for your ticket? Like? <laughs> 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 what number, what number's on your, B? Oh, okay. I don't mind, I'll sit here, I don't mind at all. <laughs> but anyway, we'll start this, will we? Yeah. My guest today, Carl Spain. Hello, how are you? The legendary Carl Spain. Um, is there many Spains around your neck of the woods, is there? Um, in the family home, growing up, there were seven. <laughs> uh, in Limerick, no. And there was a David Spain, Paul Spain, I think. Paul Spain used to play for the Gary Owen rugby team. And we used to get some of his posts every now and then. All right. So they just assumed we'd know him. Yeah. Um, the name, uh, my grandfather came, was in Port Tumna in Galway. I think it's from the Spanish Armada. Okay attacked England and the ships ran aground on the west coast of Ireland. There's like Spanish Point and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And some of the Spanish stayed and they got known as, you know, what's your name? Julio Navarro Blasca. And they go, <laughs> Spain, okay. <laughs> 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 we'll call you the Spains. But in Portumna, there was three Spain families that weren't related. Like right. Portumna's, I, I don't think I have passed through it, but it's, it's a tiny little place. You know, and so you think there's a bit of Spanish? There is, like, there is. like we, you know, as a kid, I'd certainly look Spanish um, and tan as well. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. if you were like a, yeah. you know, a guy at a cart somewhere in Barcelona. Yeah, 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 I would get. You wouldn't look out of place? I would get, yeah, I, if I was in Barcelona on the street, someone would speak to me in Spanish first yeah. before they'd go, can you speak? <laughs> <laughs> I have little English. Um, <laughs> but no, it has, that's, the, that's one of the theories. Um, uh, yeah, that the name came from that. I know in in Ireland, I know like there's names like Holland from people who went and fought for the yeah. Dutch and came back and they got known. Oh, he's the Hol-, you know nicknames became names and stuff like that. Yeah, there was but, a few Hollands at my school. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, there was uh, yeah a few grown up around, but they, 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 they go, Spain. Do you know Holland? Are you close? No, there's a few countries in between. Uh, it's also <laughs> very Irish to not even like Spanish or just Spain. Just like yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, and it, actually, the guy who's my best I'm mate, who you? John, my best mate at home. When we first got to, it was always the same joke of "How are you, Carl France? How are you, Carl Portugal?" And he called me Carl Outer Mongolia. And I remember actually having the moment of, "Look at the creativity in this! Like, you know, look, yeah. he's made the effort." <laughs> <laughs> and we're still. I don't think that's the reason we became, you know, but certainly going. Oh, there's something about. I like the cut of this young man's jib. <laughs> An 11-year-old who knew even about Outer Mongolia. Outer, Outer Mongolia. So we did, we did Lavery's last night. Uh, absolute murder picture, wasn't it? It, was, it seemed like it's, a great crowd. I was jealous it wasn't on, even though I'm sort of taking a break from stand-up at the minute. But it seemed like a hot crowd. I can't take, it was great. It was great fun. Certainly the, the couple that turned out not to be a couple, the two, the male and female nurse, were very hot and very attractive. At the front? Yeah, they, they admitted later they weren't a couple. Oh, and I don't know. I think one of them not yet. Things, I think I, I I think Sarah certainly wished it was different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mickey was praying that they weren't a couple so they could slide in. I've never seen. <laughs> oh, toss the coin. I think either would be a win. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, we were watching from the monitor in the back room, and the guy came back with some drinks, and his back just looked like like a barrel of snakes. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> fucking lumps and elbows all over his back. I get, Sexy cry. I love uh, that. That, I mean, that was one of the first things in comedy that I remember going, oh, I like this. When you're hosting a gig and there's someone very attractive in the audience mm. and you can chat away to them and I'm going, oh, I'm getting to chat to a really pretty girl in a pub and no one thinks I'm weird. <laughs> 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 I can ask her questions and talk to her. You know, you couldn't just do that back in the day. Well, hey, where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? And you can, you know, you sort of have to, you can, well, some people do just walk and outright are like, Jesus Christ, look at you. Yeah. But, you know, you try and, you try and skirt your way around it. But I, we did a gig in Ballycastle and I, like, Mark McCartney was open and he came back and he's like, Jesus, sir, that, that front row. And I went out and I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, honestly, there was like, say there was like a block of like 15 seats and then a gap and then 15 seats like this. 12 of these girls of every... It was like a buffet. Every type of lady you might want to imagine in your mind, uh, in a row, and it, it was it was honestly like I was just like, what is ha- what ha- what's going on here in Ballycastle? What's going on with the jeans up here? Like, is is, is some model having a hen night? That's what I thought. <laughs> I, I think I had a stupid line about is this the fucking OnlyFans Christmas do or something? I was just like, what is happening here? Can't even concentrate the rest of this gig. Yeah. But a couple, like a couple on a date is the... Is Dead the, centre. Is and the that, gift. To that was the thing. The, the setup in the room in Lavery's is perfect. You know, the lighting, you can see 
everyone you need to see. You know, I've had you know doing gigs and you're looking and it's just like I had it in a in a room one night when I go, you sir, what's your story? And as I said it, I looked closer and went, no, it's just a woman with short hair. Uh. And I have to go, I am now going to pretend this is all in a split set. I'm now going to pretend I was talking to the man sitting nearby. <laughs> no, this is the woman section of the whole. There was not, I'm literally panicking. There's not a woman in this half of the room. <laughs> and so a couple of them, like, like not w- just the one I spoke to, a couple of them went, are you talking to me? And I went, I'm joking because you're all women. I said, I'd call, I asked the man the question and I just got away and I don't think anyone believed oh. me, but it's just those panic moments. And you think you're not, like it's just the most, it's lighting. It's not, yeah. you're not misgendering somebody for intentionally yeah. for you. And it's even whatever. worse if you're like, yeah, you're literally going, you're like oh, leaning over the oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you were just fat, sir. Sorry, <laughs> woman. <laughs> Are you pregnant? No. All oh, right, sorry. You know, you just, the, the, you know, the times you say the wrong thing. Uh, as a joke, I used to say, um, someone said New Zealand. I go, oh, New Zealand. I think that's my favourite part of Australia. As a joke. But I did a TV show and I was on a speed date with a girl from New Zealand and I said it to her and Jesus Christ She's she fucking drink in the face She was like It's not It's, it's a completely different country And I was like I, No I know I was, I was You know In my head I'm trying to be funny But there's a difference to Being on stage mode When you're just In a one on one conversation yeah. Like in a Dating You know Even it was being On cameras And she just I couldn't Like even win her back To not hating me yeah. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I said, and uh, I was just, and it was just like, she was so, no, she was gone. And I was like, oh. Is that dating show available on YouTube? No. <laughs> <laughs> I keep meaning to put it up. I don't, actually, I don't know if it was that clip fully used, but it was, it was, uh, I, it's, I did the TV show Carl's Playing Once a Woman 17 years ago. That's, really? how I, that's how I met my girlfriend and we're still together. Oh, it worked. Six part TV show on Fuck RT. Fuck Tinder. <laughs> and um, yeah, exactly. Get yourself a, commission yourself but a dated, TV show. It was weird. Chicks. I dated, there was 200 People applied to date me, which I remember. It's not that funny. And uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> only one of them was a man. Um, it was it was called Carl Spain Once a Woman, so it was quite specific as to what I was looking for. And it was once misprinted in a paper as Carl Spain O N C E, a woman was once a woman, <laughs> which gave it would be a completely different show. Um, but it was uh, no, it was a great. But that thing of out in the dating world. It's, I never want to be out there again, you know. No, fucking hell. You know. I can't imagine how sad it would be if I had a tender. <laughs> I was joking around, you know, it would be like a, you know when a, like a dog has an owner that dies and it just waits by the door. <laughs> and like any little noise, it's like, oh. is that, was that? Oh no, it's still gone. <laughs> That's such a lovely image for being single. Like I'm in my 50s now and I'm going, oh God. Like I sometimes look at Rachel and go, please don't die. <laughs> What age is she? She's in her 40s. She's <laughs> seven years younger. She's 44. Don't die, um, please. I please, can't be single. Please don't die on me. <laughs> it's. I think it's all the chat, you know, all the fucking, all the bullshit chat you'd have to do, you know, on the dating scene. No, but I think I'd just be looking for her again. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm just... <laughs> just sitting there with I'm, the I'm, right? You know, I think it's that thing when you're quite happy in a... Like, I'm 51, so I've... It's... I'll be talking nearly 40 years of dating... Do you know what I mean? Of talking to girls and stuff like that. And I'm really happy with where we got. I can't look for another 20 years to find, yeah. you know. And uh, it's even that thing of you, you, someone go, but what about if it was whoever, like, you know, Margot Robbie or something like that. And I go, <laughs> I would love to see that. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, even if she was into it, you know, after about six weeks, I think I'd be gone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go off and make a film, Margot, will you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here, let me talk about this. We turned up for a uh, photo sh- promo shoot in uh, Galway and you had a bag of DVDs. I did have a bag of DVDs, yes. Some mental ill or yes? What's <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that's my... Because everybody of, was like, what, Carl, what the fuck I just you bought them, it? yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to remember what I bought that day, but... Um, Sharknado one. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I do not have Sharknado. That would, that would be left behind. I tend to buy, because they're so cheap. I'm actually, there's a cash exchange near here. I'm thinking of going over after here. Cash it's, converters? Yeah, the, well. the, the CEX. I think oh, they yeah. call it the sex shop, yeah. like, you know, but I tend not to call it that. <laughs> but I do like, um, I, my particular favourite is like 1970s British TV dramas that I may have seen as a child or never saw and re-watching them. 
and going, oh, this is great or this is horrific. Um, I think you, you definitely invest more in a DVD if you put it in. And oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Set. Like now you just fucking flick through Netflix and don't watch anything. I, I, Sean Walsh did, uh, did a bit uh, about, oh, yes. about how he once downloaded a movie onto his telly that he had on DVD on the shelf. Because <laughs> he was so lazy. And I went, I would never do that. He also had that bit where he was just like flicking on Netflix and he did that thing where he just did it way too long. <laughs> and, and then it came round again to being funny. He was like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Just kept going. No, no, no. <laughs> What's the, how many, how many have you got in the collection now? I couldn't even begin to count, but. Like if someone broke into your house, would they be like, they well, of course need, he murdered people. Did need, no, no, no. It's, He's got so many I, have, I, have them, I have them out of the casing and in the wallets. Well, well that's even more crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But nearly, nearly like ev like done those giant wallets. Yeah. So for movies, that would be like two letters. Yeah. And for TV shows, sometimes A might have, no A is only one, but like C has two. Yeah. You know. Oh so my god. It's it is um, it's a it's it's a small bedroom full of DVD wallets. Sometimes I'd buy the, something I've had already. Would you believe that? But um, but you, like you're literally spending twenty p. So it's five for a pound. You kind of go, I'll take the risk. Yeah, you know that I, you know, I think I have the Fisher King, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll take the risk for twenty p, and I have a friend, and I have a divorced, twice divorced friend up in Sligo who gets my overspill when I meet him. I give him like a bag of these. I have these twice, and oh, they're all. Wow. It, if if I buy it twice, it's usually because it's something really good. So he gets. So you buy it twice if it's a good movie? No, no. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll take the risk and might accidentally buy it twice. Okay. Why well, are they you like know. wrapped up in this lucky bag of? No, no. I'll have it. I have it at home. About five years ago, I we bought just can't it. Can't remember. Can't remember if I have it. And then I'll go. Oh, yeah, the Fisher King was an example of. Do I, I can't remember if I have the Fisher King. And did I tape it off TV? You know. Now the real. Uh, did I tape it off TV? No, I'm just going to buy it. It's twenty p. And you you get annoyed if you don't. <laughs> but up the north is actually way better for them than down south like the amount of times you go into a charity shop you walk in you see a wall of DVDs and you go brilliant and then you just go oh great and everyone got rid of their born supremacy again or yeah. <laughs> you know it's the same it's like they're getting they're getting the, the, the last charity a shop the day before they took all the DVDs put them in a the van drove ahead of me and put them up <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on some long time hidden camera show I never thought about that because they're, they're obviously you know there are movies that at the time were like worth purchasing because you're like oh this is a blockbuster film I'll watch, this I'll, again. I'll, I'll, I'll watch this again so you probably do end up with like you know a million fucking avatars or you know never seen avatar have you never I seen don't... avatar maybe that was post dvd times was it no it's not that, that's the weird thing i was in do you have a really good dvd player because you um, probably get like a I t no i play it off the laptop usually is where i watch them i have a few dvd players oh. i have vcr players i have a few of them combos and whatever like that oh, but yeah. um I ha it, it, I tend to watch it on the laptop, but I was in in the UK a bit recently, and they had HMVs like it was nineteen ninety six. There's anything new? Movies are still out in DVD. I, c I couldn't believe it because the ones in Ireland are all shutting down. Yeah, and the ones in England are all fully stocked. Latest series of things, and I'm like, inside number nine, all series, and I'm like, this is weird. Because you, you wouldn't even think that they produce those things That's anymore. That's exactly. I was like, that this is. This is genuinely surprising me because you literally can't give them away in in Ireland. You know, people are going, no. It, there must be some uh, like a. There's more people out there like me. Like a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the customers in HMV must be some fucking there is that real cool guys. There is that weird thing. Sometimes you're in a shop and like, what, let's say the cash exchange shop, and it's a big one somewhere, and you're walking around and you just have a notice of everyone else in the shop, and you go, "Am I one of these guys?" Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you is, never look mentally this, sane. Is with this a... my community? <laughs> and I look. Do I look like I fit in here? Is that what I am? Yeah, you never look mentally sane with a, a plastic bag filled with uh, DVDs. The plastic bag thing is kind of where it's, I need to bring yeah, you a need rucksack. To get, yeah, you need to get, need to bring get a, yourself a douche, a douche bag, bag like one yeah, of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah, need to bring a rucksack with me. People go, oh, that's just a guy coming from the gym. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just a joke you did last night about you know all the other guys at the gym will laugh at me or something oh. and everyone laughs and you're like that's not it that's not, that's not <laughs> it. <laughs> it's it, it's actually my favorite joke of ever the lads in the gym 
call me Jerry Adams because even though I've been a member for years, no one can prove it. There's no evidence. <laughs> but it's such a great moment when you go, the lads in the gym are always slagging me and everyone laughs yeah. because you know the punchline really is going to work. Yeah. So I can milk, sometimes I've milked that yeah. <laughs> like two or three times. I go, the lads in the gym and you just stare at someone, make them laugh because yeah. it, you're building the tension and it's, it's, it's good fun. But uh, it didn't work uh, that joke didn't work twice for me. Once when I told it to a Sinn Féin councillor in Limerick, who I said, oh, I have, a, I have a Jerry Adams joke. And he looks at me and I told him the joke and it was like he was deaf. I just didn't, I couldn't lip read, just the most, and I laughed in his face then. And the other time I did a gig in is Anderson's Town, oh, yeah. their sports centre there yeah, or something yeah. years ago. Leisure centre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone said, oh, Jerry's cousin was in the audience. Oh, for sure. So yeah. I didn't look, it was like, I'll win him over with this. I did the joke and it got nothing. And I panicked on, whoa. And one of the other comics turned, said, I looked and everyone in the room kind of did a, <laughs> it's Jerry's cousin yeah. laughing. And uh, you can't even be seen to be laughing at it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So. It's funny, like, you know, in the north, there there legit are some places where people are like, just leave it. You know, just say, just not to, not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember being at, famously, the first ever, did you ever do Daly's Comedy Club in Oma? No, I was, I've been meant to a couple of times and didn't. Maybe I did. No, I was last night because my friends were telling me last night. No, you did a gig in Lisburn before, and I went. Did I? I didn't remember. I was going. To, we were going through places I've done in the north. Yeah. So no, I don't think I did the club in Oma. I may they, have done something in Oma. They had their sort of birthday show a couple of weeks ago, and I did it. It was their twelve year birthday or whatever, and and twelfth birthday. Some people might call it. And uh, <laughs> we um, we're sitting around just you know reminiscing about because I did the first ever one. Oh, wow. The first one years ago, and it was like... Do you know how long ago that was? Oh, God. 12, 12 portions ago? of years. <laughs> <laughs> 12 by 12. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I remember, I can't remember, I can't, I'll not even say the guy's name, but he was like, oh, I've got a great Oma Bomb joke. And everyone was like, nah. Jesus nah, Christ. Just no. Wow. Just no. Uh, there isn't one, you know what I mean? Like, it's There's the sort no of time... There's no joke funny enough. No, there isn't. And there, it's like, it's the sort of time you're like, you know, that guy's, you know, sister died, this guy's brothers blind yeah, everyone, or something like no matter who you talk to they're related or were directly affected by it and you're like you just can't do it there's, yeah there, there's uh, not there's the thing of i would defend everyone's right to do a joke but you know there's times no that's that you're already offensive if you're going to do oh that. yeah yeah and the guy the guy was already shite as well you know what yeah, i mean so it's not like you're going to problem your... of new comedians they go oh they're look they can't get a laugh so they look for a reaction mm-hmm so they go for a groan or a noise and they think, oh, I got something from them. Yeah. He says, well, just say something shocking. I stood, I never, I, I didn't realise it till a couple of years later. I, we were going to Donegal one summer. Um, was it 98 when the bomb happened, was it? I, I think sure. so, yeah. I think that's what the movie's called, um, isn't it? Did I make oh, that up? But um, we were, I think it was 1998, we were going up Sounds to right. Donegal for, for a weekend. And we stopped in Oma for our lunch and we walked down the street and we stood. And I remember saying, you wouldn't know you're even in the north. Only we saw that kid with a Rangers jersey on um, a few minutes ago, we, right in the centre of Oma. And I went, I don't think Oma's ever, I never remember Oma being mentioned in the Troubles to you mm. or anything. And we're literally having this conversation. We'd gone for a short stroll. And when I saw, uh, it was a couple of years later where the bomb had gone off. We stood literally where that, it was a car parked, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We stood on that, literally on the spot where, the, and I'm saying this, and it was like, I know, I, I, it wasn't like a near, I'm not saying I was a near miss or anything, but yeah. it's just that I had that thought on that spot. Yeah. Freaked me out. When, like, I, didn't, I remember when the bomb went off going, God, you know, oh my, it was such a nice place, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it was the years later that I realised I literally stood where the bomb, because the, 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 wasn't it the phone call sent everyone in the other direction? Yeah. Wasn't that it? They sent people into the bomb. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I was like, oh. But I remember literally going, oh. And it was like the naivety of it at the time, or looking back, you know, but yeah, that was, yeah. The, oh, so Oma was always a, a weird resonance with me that, but I don't think, I'd, I don't think, I don't think I could ever write an Oma bomb joke. No, That I could tell the, in the north <clears> of Ireland, not to mind Oma. You no, know, you can't uh, even. The, uh, it's not something that would. It's not something I'd find humor in. You know, I mean, you go. People say cancer. You can find f- humor in cancer. You know, or you can find humor in other stuff. Like yeah. you know, but uh, um, I remember introducing uh, 
a colleague of mine saying, people say you can't laugh about cancer. He said, cancer's not funny. I'm saying, you're only saying cancer's not funny because you've seen this man's show about his cancer. <laughs> 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 anyway, here he is. <laughs> you, uh, you, everybody has a Carl Spain intro story there. Oh, uh, that, that <laughs> Can I give you mine? I don't even know if you remember this. Oh, at the, God. At the first, and I don't even know if this is intentional, but we did that, the big gala night at the Galmont. On one of those, oh, like, I'm already dreading this. The first, the first one back after COVID, or maybe it was. Oh, like, I thought I'd stop doing them by now. It was like half then. a. I, see, I don't know if this is intentional, and that you know, there's like how many people's in there? Eight hundred or something? There's yeah, like yeah, it's a big room. Yeah, yeah, big tables and everything, and uh, the crowd were very odd just because they were out for the first time. Maybe I don't know, and uh, there was ones in the front and. Uh, uh, you know, of darker complexion with uh, the COVID masks on. And you were like, oh, what's, what's your name? And the guy gave his name. You're like, where do you work or whatever? Uh, and he's like, Boston Scientific. So it's obviously like a... Some yeah, sort it's of a big company some in Some Galway, sort of scientist, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> to do medical. I never... A few people, or most people had their their COVID masks off. And he said something like, what's the name of the masks? COVID or Muslims? <laughs> or something like that. And, and then you just went, ladies and gentlemen, call get <laughs> I went out and I was like, well, this isn't going to go great. <laughs> I have vague recollections of that. I'll, I'll deny it was that intense or whatever like that. I actually vague recollect. I think I knew one of them. I think if that's one of that group used to come to the comedy the whole time. So I think that might, it might I don't know, was it referenced? Because the joke I used to do the whole time, it's not to the introductions, was um, there's a Brazilian girl used to come to the gig every week in Galway. And I'd every week ask her, where are you from? She go Brazil, Brazilian. I'm in a long term relationship. I haven't seen a Brazilian in years. <laughs> and it became it, the, the humor came from the repetition every so often. Yeah. And even one week, she said, "Will you please just stop doing?" You know. And I was like, "Okay, okay." But you know, all you have to do is say a different country. So one night she goes, "The Netherlands," and I go, "The Netherlands." I'm in a long term relationship. I haven't seen a Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> And about three people lost it. And then I got to tell the joke anyway. Yeah. Um, but the introductions, the one, um, Jack Whitehall brought it up on something where he talked about, I introduced him. Actually, I did it to Michael McIntyre first, dropping names in in Kilkenny. You've met everybody. No, but I'm, I'm around long enough. That's the whole, you know. How long have you? 23 uh, yeah, years. Yeah, that's plenty. So, like, you know, I did, like, real shitty gigs with Michael in Preston, like, you yeah. know, like. 20 years ago I remember actually coming to Belfast to do the laughter lounge in the Odyssey and couldn't yeah. get there because of the traffic because Michael was on in the SSE oh. or whatever it was called at the time and I'm like literally what's on there and I went Michael McIntyre and I'm going I was in Brighton with him 18 months ago <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, the, introduction, the, the introduction and it was for an English act uh, I did it to Milton Jones and he dealt with uh, Milton's one because it's, f it's funny what he said like you know I said uh, this next act ladies and we've had an Irish act this next act now is an English act but don't worry his family have a long history and association with the, with the area he actually his grandfather was head of the Black and Tans in the Leinster region and uh, anyway here he is Milton Jones and Milton walked on and it's great to be back and the audience lost it <laughs> now they knew the audience knew it was a joke yeah. with Michael I actually he was annoying uh he was annoying with us backstage, the other comics, and he was, and uh, so I just, I went, I want, and, but it was a bad gig. No, no, no one really had a good gig. I was hosting. No one really had a good gig. <laughs> and uh, it took him a while to win him over, but that was before he was famous as well. Like, But Michael was brilliant. Like, he was brilliant on stage. He, he, Michael, there's a few people, Michael Ma McIntyre, Lee Mack are two definitely that would take a room to a whole new place. Mm -hmm. Gig could be shit, gig could be good, but it, different and it's amazing yeah. once they've been on once they're on you suddenly go Mickey Flanagan did it once in Edinburgh one of the worst gigs I was ever on it I come this is horrendous and Mickey walked on again before he was anything and took after about two minutes everyone I was like wow you know just it's suddenly just see this is amazing I'm trying to think the the foil arms and hog I used to give them loads of them um I say foil arms and hog uh, people people say it's courage going on stage on your own I'll tell you real courage going on stage with two talentless mates <laughs> <laughs> that you're stuck with because you were friends in college <laughs> and you know they've nothing else in their life and you have to bring them around just because one of them's fucking your sister anyway here they are <laughs> <laughs> for arms and all or I'd call them tuk tuk which because it's a taxi that carries two passengers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I had loads of them. Fred Cook, got, Fred Cook, the one was uh, the comedians. Um, we don't get offended by much, but there's one four letter F word and one four letter C word that always upsets us. Please welcome Fred Cook. <laughs> he spells Cook with five letters. But, um, and I did that at a fest, the Ivy Gardens Festival one year and Fred was coming on to do a thing for a hidden camera TV show with someone in the audience doing the whole show about them. But I got a call weeks later. We need it. We've no context for it being at a comedy festival. So we need your introduction. Mm. So I got my insult of Fred and the introduction was used and I got a day's filming or half a day. It was like 250 quid. I would like literally answering the phone. Can we use your introduction? Yeah. I just made 250 <laughs> quid. <laughs> Wish I had more calls like that. But yeah, it was my, my intention was always it's a bit of fun. I would never, yeah. you know, I did it once very early on. I assume fun. there's a bit of a f relationship going on there with the person. You're not going to yeah, like. But yeah, it's never like if I did like I did actually in Kilkenny one year, I did it the first two acts. But Andy Parsons was closing the show and I didn't know Andy well enough. So I said, I gave him a proper introduction. He went down and started ripping me apart for not giving him one. <laughs> and I was going to say, and I went, go like, go, you know, he was ready for me to say yeah. something and was going to give it back. Yeah. But because it didn't, it fucked him up. And he, but he told everyone that. And I was like, well, okay, Alan, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> you but it was that thing of, I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel I knew him well enough to yeah. do it, even though I know he would have known, uh, uh, you know, certainly yeah. afterwards, would, he would have known I was only joking or whatever like that. With Fred, Fred, they, I stopped because of Fred because Fred was, I knew, I was like, oh, he's, he's getting more nervous about what it would be rather than what it was. Yeah. Like one night it was, we don't have another interval, but we do have this next act. <laughs> <laughs> and his partner was down the back and said, it's Fred. <laughs> the one, there was a comedian that said, um, said the word retard on stage and upset people. Um, um, last night? No, no, this was years ago. And uh, there was no offensive words last night. Someone <laughs> said the word retard and said, oh, blah, blah, you can't say that word anymore, blah, blah, blah. And it created a bit of tension in the room. And I went on afterwards. I didn't know we couldn't say that word. How am I meant to introduce Frank? <laughs> 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 so I, I had, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't always Friday. It became a thing and it was, I, it, now my, I stopped doing it because I was worried that someone would think it's not uh, like I'm trying to fuck him up or it's yeah. not affectionate. I did it and I said, and realized you have to do it for everybody or not, you know, yeah. which I would try and do, you know, especially if it was a gala show like that, you know, that you're doing, you're doing something, you go, but then you get to the point of, oh, you know, like whoever's fifth on is gone. What the fuck are you saying about me? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think the audience, for me, the audience kind of enjoy it going, oh, that shows the crack backstage. We're getting a little peep into the yeah. the green room and we're getting a little taste of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I know sometimes I wish there was a bit more, you know, sometimes you see footage from like clubs in New York where like one guy's introduced another guy and they kind of both hang out on stage for a second and then yeah, yeah. he gets left alone. I wish there was a bit more of that maybe. But I, 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 last night was... Um, I had great just hanging out after, you know, I was yeah. there we were chatting for before and after the show and well, during the interval and after the show, I was like, oh, this missed, it's just, I haven't had this in a while, you yeah. know, with just three or four, five comics sitting around swapping stories, gossip and stuff like that, you it, know. That, that's what, like, Lavery's the actual bar have been great to us because the, the night is pretty successful. So anything you ask for, you're like, can we get a sign up there? Boom, it's there next week. Yeah, can yeah, we get yeah. these lights fixed? Boom, it's there. And the green room, is the staff room for the staff yeah, of, yeah. of the bar, but during the comedy club, they just eat somewhere else. All right. <laughs> so it's like they just fuck them off and we get that little room. But I've noticed <clears throat> people just come down when they're not on. They just come down, hang about. Like like Chris Kent was doing a gig in like the Mac or something and came back over to Lavery's after his gig. You know, it's become a little yeah, place yeah. where people just come down and hang out and people come down and eat their, uh, that, eat, that eat their dinner the and, and leave. Of the club. The only yeah. in London, the comedy store that was it in the store. You literally, if you were on in the comedy store, and suddenly people would just drop in, and I'm like, "Oh, are you are you dropping in?" And all I was yeah. doing a thing, or I was on whatever. I was on a show and popping in and doing that. Um, I know talking before we started recording about Kevin Hart. I remember that I missed Chris Rock by a week in the comedy store, right? And I was so annoyed. It was Adam Hills was hosting. He was telling the story afterwards. 
and he said it was weird just introducing him because you know what do you say like you know yeah. so he started going oh this guy he's been in a couple of movies he's been no started downplaying his yeah. credits and then went and he hosted the Oscars and he's in the audience and went, huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Chris Rock and what wow, you know because if he you know we, there was, I don't know was it advertised even a special guest or we have you know he'd said at the interval we've two actually guests at this section or three mm. or whatever it was. But yeah, I imagine you're sitting there and you go, and he's hosted the Oscars, and you're like, what? <laughs> I wonder, is it, will he ever do anything at the Oscars that will catch the attention more? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and it was so strange, like that that little period of time. Sure, like Dave Chappelle dropped into hot water, and then somewhere else oh, in yeah, London, yeah, yeah. Uh, Top Secret maybe, and then like Kevin Hart was here. It was like a weird. It was a wild time. Louis C.K. was in the fucking limelight. You know, it's just like a, did he was he in all right yeah. doing the solo show? Was he? yeah, all right, two nights Jeez. in a row. It was just a weird time where like. I, I All met him. I really? met him, and he came over to Dublin, did that Ivy Gardens festival. Twelve died in his arse every like couple of shows. Yeah, but he'd already been. He was already, I think, regarded. I think Ricky Gervais had said the best comic in the world was Louis C.K. Yeah, at that time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, and uh, I went. Des Bishop knew him. He was down outside the comedy internet, the international outside the international bar. And I went, oh, hi, Louis, no, no, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, you're the guy that writes for Dane Cook. And I went, oh, and he just, yeah, did a face. And I went, oh, you idiot, Carl, you fucking idiot. Is that uh, true, though? I said that. No, he didn't write no. for Dane Cook stole. Oh, oh, yeah. Dane Cook did very similar material. Oh, yes, that's right. But, and everyone said, you just robbed Louis C.K. stuff. And he went, no, no, I didn't. And the, there was a scene in Louis chat show. Yeah, or, he, uh, not chat show, yeah, sitcom that uh, yeah, where they, they brought, kind it of up, yeah. brought it up or whatever like that but he went oh god I, w I was in my head going I've just met uh, Louis C.K. and then I, I realised I gigged with him in Kilkenny before that I'd met him in Montreal I'd met him a few times I didn't need to be introduced and I was like you just forget and it was like oh my god I completely forgot I knew this I guy I thought he would have ta taken that joke well he, I spoke to him actually the following night and said, I, I apologise. And he went, you didn't need to, I, you know, he understood, I understood, you didn't need to apologise. I said, oh, sorry, I just saw a reaction. He was not, I, don't worry about it, we're cool. But it did stick in my head for the night, 24 hours. It was like, oh. Because that's what you think. You think these, you know, all you hear is all those New York comics, all, oh, we're, everyone's ball busting and having fucking whatever. And then they can't take any sort of. No, any it's that thing of, they want to know who they're t talking with. Because it's like, you know, you go like, uh, like, well, I'd be the case where, let's say I was on a Labry's last night and someone comes up to me out of the crowd and goes, blah, blah, blah. And I go, who the fuck are you? And then I go, Colin goes, oh, have you met yeah. Mikey Mikey, who's best new comic in Belfast? Oh, hi. Yeah. It's a different thing yeah. when it comes from, you know, you just think, it's, is it just a punter being a dick? Yeah. Because they think, oh, that's what comedians do. It just insults, you know, that's how I let them know I'm funny. Yeah, there is a Or if that. it's someone chatting, like, you know, they, uh, yeah, I would have been, I think too full on back and I'm less so now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, doing a gig. Like there, there was a period of time where you just couldn't, if you were sort of up and coming, there weren't enough gigs and they wanted a, a little bit of exclusive time around that gig they gave oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah. And I could not get gigs in like the Empire, Queens or anything. But I was on a night where you were on in Queens. Right. And I think you were maybe closing, right? Obviously, obviously, <laughs> but you were you weren't there at the start of the gig, right? So, and they wouldn't even give me like a full support slot at the time. I had to split the support with some other guy. All right, so I hadn't seen you, or I hadn't been on. I hadn't seen you at all in the building at all. And I, I remember coming off. Someone else, I can't, who the fuck was the other guy? We we had ten minutes each. He did ten, then I did ten, and I came off. And you were at the side of the thing, and you were like, oh, that that fucking bet there you should throw in this line and I but I didn't know who you were because I'd never seen you before <laughs> and I hadn't met you pre-gig and I was just like yeah cheers who the fuck is that <laughs> and I'd done stand up for about you know 18 months probably but it was just like who the fuck is this was guy? it a good like, suggestion if do you remember it wasn't even a good joke I don't think it, <laughs> I don't think it was uh, I have, to, I have it's, it's a compulsion yeah it's a compulsion of mine if I see you do a routine I did it to Mickey last night he was doing oh, yeah. the thing and I think if I see I, I, I in my head, I describe it as I'm just seeing something before you will. Yeah. You know, which I think is, you know, sometimes if you're, if See, you're chiseling away. You're I think, uh, you know, I think I've done stand up for like 13 years, which is fine. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. But like after a certain amount of time, you'll take lines from people because you go, yes. You know, you don't have the like ego no, that, anymore where you're like. I thought that's what it was. When I started, we like, I certainly would have done it. We'd workshop each other's material. Do you know, we yeah. were, we were, like there was a group of us, um, 
there was Ruben who did comedy without words, but you'd still make suggestions. There was um, PJ Gallagher, you know, there was uh, Michael Downey. There was, a, there was a load of us around the same era kind of started. And you go, oh, when do you think that? You do that? And you go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone makes a suggestion. I go, no, it doesn't work because of that. And you go, oh, yeah. And then you go, maybe, if, but if I should change that and did that. Oh, now it works. And you give someone a line and it, 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 um, it, it feeds in. Uh, it makes it, and the person goes, because in my head, when I, I see that laugh, um, it, it, it's my laugh. When I see, like if I, said, like if I gave you a, a, a line or something and you say the line, it gets the laugh. In my head, I'm watching that. That's my, I'm not, you know, I get the, the satisfaction from yeah, the laugh. I'm not like, looking yeah. for payment or anything yeah. else. Um, the favorite, It'd be funny if you were. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, can I get an, an, another 50p for that, please? I'll, I'll um, give you this fucking born the one, the one joke I wish I could take back... Um, <laughs> I was writing for Al Porter years ago and oh. he'd met Roger Moore right. and he said, I want to write about that. And I says, what happened? He says, well, I met Roger Moore and I've just left chatting to his wife, but I didn't, I just shook his hand. So the joke, the routine then was, I was on the phone with him first and he's going, so I met, he says, so you, well, all right. So the first thing is your agent rings you and says, Roger Moore and you go I'm doing as much as I can <laughs> <laughs> and he's on the other end of the phone going I should have seen that and I went yeah you should um, but then the, the truth like the truth is he actually it was Roger Moore's wife and son were there so he's chatting to the wife doesn't know what to say it's Lady Moore she's a woman whatever age she was yeah. and he just couldn't talk to her so he just says the son oh you're a very handsome man to the son you're you know, just like Roger you're very handsome and the wife says, that's not Roger, son. That's the man before Roger. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I said it, I went, that wouldn't work for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I could have met, and I'm literally in my head, I could have met Roger Moore. I, I, it's a, a joke I love. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm praising myself. I loved the joke. And I went, oh, I want that back. And I oh, went, that's Don't. great. Don't do it. No. I, I, and he goes, no, 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 no. I'll make that work. I went, no. And I was so annoyed. I went, oh, if it just paused and thought about it, I went, oh, no, can't think of anything. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, there's times when I've had it when um, uh, I did it. There was one um, said to, uh, there was a girl who wouldn't shut up and she was there coming on, like jokingly coming on to me. I was in a club in Dublin doing a gig and she kept saying, oh, I want to come to bed with you. So I gave her the chance to sleep with me before the show and she blew it. And um, <laughs> it gets a big laugh. And I in instantly went, that'll work better with Al. And I, gave, I, said, I rang Al and said, oh, a joke. Oh, thanks a million. Yeah. And it's, it's sometimes you write a joke and you go, no, that's better there. There was yeah. a joke I had about COVID saying COVID's like getting pregnant. Um, uh, it's going to happen and you won't know who gave it to you <laughs> you know but I've, I gave it to something it's not, it wouldn't work yeah. it, I'd have to go I overheard the yeah. you know it doesn't yeah. so when you're making that journey sometimes it's better just here you go I know that is annoying sometimes when you're like well I've had like three ideas that work better for somebody else I know <laughs> me and Arm McCann work quite well together because he is more like he'll point out to me if something is like a bit yeah yeah like I'll just tell him something or I'll be ranting about something he was like that, that should be a bit He's good at that. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. Sometimes we'll throw lines back and forward at each other. Whatever. I was, I was. Uh, a, a famous comedian said to me recently. Told me a funny thing. His mate said, and I went, I don't think you'll. I, I'm not going to say what the bit is on air. But it says uh, you won't get away with that on stage. But you could put it in a book or a script mm -hmm. or something like that because it's such. It's a funny, funny line. Yeah. But it's one of those that people might be. Oh, I don't know. If, should I laugh at that? But in a script or in dialogue. Yeah. It's killer, like, you know. Yeah. You can do that nowadays. You can find a place for your... Exactly. Everything, you can have, yeah, like, a know. podcast bit I'm, or a yeah, freaking remember, whatever. Did, did I tweet? I was trying to... Even tweeting something, you can lose nuance on it. Or the last tweet I sent, I was, I was only... Someone was talking about HMV closed down and having worked there over Christmas. And I tweeted back. I said, I remember the Clint Eastwood box set used to be on sale every Christmas. So it's like, I don't know, 15 movies and DVD. I'm still back to DVDs. But it was a big box set. And on the side of the box, in big letters, was Clint. Right. And they had a stack of them, my height, in HMV, on the first floor in Grafton Street in Dublin one Christmas. And someone working there was, I never met the person, but I loved them because they put the sticker on the L and the I met. 
So they made Clint look like a different word. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere else with that. Yeah. So Clint was like, and just the sticker made the L and the I look like a yeah. U. So there was a stack <laughs> and you're walking along and I went, oh, that is just perfect. <laughs> And I'm even looking, I actually, when I see something, I was just like, I remember, I, this could be At 10, the CCTV, just like. 10, 15 years ago, but I'm literally waiting to see, watching for a minute, can I see someone else's reaction of enjoying it? Yeah. It was just the most perfect thing. If you see the Clint Eastwood, yellow writing there, it, it was just that sticker. Look, there was a few of them, enough of them done that it was deliberate. Oh, perfect. You know, and I was like, that is perfect. I think there used to be a t-shirt brand that said Clint, and it looked like cunt from a... Yeah, there the, was, there what was about a, the guy last night with the what's that brand now? With N- nice, it was N I C C E. Or what is it? Is it Nietzsche or something? I don't know. And I thought it said nonce. <laughs> and I was like, what? The? <laughs> <laughs> it was a double take, and uh, I was like, what? Because it's always five letters, and the way it just it, it you know you try not to get distracted or something will go into your head, but it literally was one of those. Hello, <laughs> straight away. Oh, I can't, I can't hold anything in if I'm emceeing. Like I'm, it's almost like yeah, yeah. OCD. I'll just be yeah. like, hey, what the fuck? Who's, who's, who's waving know? the keys? Who's waving the keys? Let's see the keys. Yeah, yeah. You've dropped your vape. It's rolled out. It's not just yeah, a, yeah. No, it's it's that's I, 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 Lavery's is such a, like when you can see the front row the way it was just and literally you're looking in their eyes or something like you're. I like that. I don't like a real like a waiter dark room and no, a well at stage. I like a sort of mid. I can't deal with it. I actually did. There was a couple and I found out after I was, the, the, the Love Island routine I did in one of the theatre shows I did. They were, I did the Love Island routine and someone told me afterwards they were a mother and a mother and son. <laughs> that was like joking. They just went with it. doesn't matter for the sake of the joke or the room. I, you love, know? I mean, I, I hate emceeing. I, don't, I, I love it. I, I don't know why. Like it, it makes me terrified. I don't think I'm too bad at it, but it fucking scares life out of me. But I don't know. In, in the last few months what has gone on with the people who attend Lavery's like you could go like wall to wall and everybody is a lunatic and they do some <laughs> insane job what are you radiographer yeah yeah what's the weirdest thing you find someone's arse a dumbbell okay brilliant and then ju- just like chaos like absolute chaos the whole way along I the dated a radiographer she told me some unbelievable story oh, sure. I would have got 10 minutes out of a radiographer yeah. in the front row the one with an MC uh, I love doing it I think part of it's um, Tommy Tiernan was talking about writing material one time and he said about he sometimes just improvises on stage now I know he did the whole thing of just going on with nothing but this was when he was in the middle of a new show and he's doing a bit and he'd, something would be in his head and he said I'll just start talking about it and he said if you leap the net appears oh yeah for sure the safety net so I've had it with nights where you'll talk to someone and you're literally going you go nowhere. The volume going. You're stuck here, and then you'll just pull it out, and you. It's so much more satisfying. Yeah. Than anything else, like you know that thing of you suddenly or you connect two people yeah. in the audience from something that was said already. Blah blah blah. Oh, the joy, the joy that. Yeah. I genu- I love. I love those moments. MC. That's to me. Word. And what I hate is the MC. I call them press play MCs. Where you mm-hmm. walk on and they go, look at you, and they're there. Look at you there, blah blah blah. And you go, you've said that to that chair twenty yeah. times in a row. <laughs> Whoever's sitting in that chair looks young or looks sexy or looks stupid or looks something. Yeah. You just you're you're dead behind the eyes. You yeah. just there's nothing spontaneous, and it's like, oh, you, I'm gonna get to you. Oh, and I'm like, please stop, please, you're torturing me. There's a weird thing happened to Lavery's where I was speaking to this guy and he was a wedding DJ. And I was like, what's the big floor fillers for you? And he was telling me. And I moved on to this other girl. I was like, oh, what are you doing? She goes, I'm an author. And I was like, okay. And she goes, I write books for... And then she launched into this big... Like, I, I, like I write books for uh, neurodiverse children. Or no, for neurotypical children to understand what it's like for other kids to live with autism. And I was just like... <laughs> Okay. I need pilots in. And, and, every, and everybody <laughs> just went mad. And I, and I just went, and what's your second favorite floor filler? Like back to this guy. I was just like, I have nothing. But then because that, cl- and fair enough, the the clip did did the rounds a bit. It got quite a lot of views. And the girl messaged me saying, I've sold like fucking yeah, it hundred, works for everybody. hundreds yeah, of yeah, these yeah. books. And I was like, I'm so glad I didn't even say anything smart or stupid. I just, I just admitted that I was thick and was just like, okay, we're yeah, all. Yeah, there, there, there's no offense. In, uh, yeah, you know. And uh, then it became a thing where 
it, it was almost like it was deliberate. These people, I would speak to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, we work with, you know, families <laughs> of people who have died of cancer. And I was oh, like, I was, every week, I was just like, how the fuck am I supposed to... Yeah, and they yeah. were great crack, actually. You know, they, they were like, we do residentials with families who are grieving and all. And I was like, that must be some fucking crack, like, out paddleboarding in the rain. So I, can, I can imagine what it's like to talk in front of a tough crowd. <laughs> 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 yeah. Both down on our arse here. Uh, we, oh, I, we haven't even talked about your Kevin. <laughs> you know, we've talked about our Kevin enough. How many dates have we done now with Kevin Bridges? Oh, it's... Because um, that's where most, a lot of people might have seen you if they're oh, watching the here SSE, at home. Oh, the SSE, hi. I'm the same guy. If you were at the SSE, Matter. one of the one one of the, one of the 90 shows. If you ha if you weren't there, that won't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it was six in, six in Belfast. It's already blurred out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of the podcast, um, Blurred Out. It was six shows in Belfast. It was, it was, I think it was 50 something with Mr. Bridges. Um, it was just, I could do it forever. Yeah? I swear to God, it was just, it's, Kevin is amazing. You know, I, we, we had such a laugh. Um, There's a WhatsApp group that we, um, one of the production girls are in it and we keep saying thank god for holly because the stuff the two security guys would have dumped in the whatsapp group oh yeah the toxic masculinity yeah. of that they get from their other security guard friends oh, yeah. would have been horrific so we keep reminding them that holly's there but uh you know so just even i'm saying the offstage stuff was a joy not to mind the onstage like so you're staying in the best hotels getting driven around yeah. getting collected from the airport getting brought and you're just gone and then you have to do 25 minutes there in a gorgeous arena and yeah. it's catering and you're like going why isn't it always like yeah, this? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you have to go back and do just your regular stuff well like, that, that's why Laffrey's was actually one of the, the first gigs back so it was actually a joy to do it um, what was the biggest crowd um, I think Aberdeen is the biggest really Aberdeen, they had an arena in Aberdeen and they knocked it and built a bigger one with twice the size in the same spot. There's okay, no. the, uh, the way it's set up is the hydro is, I think, I think the hydro in Glasgow is 12,000 and he did 16 nights there, which is just mental. I actually nearly had a panic attack looking at his tour schedule. I it's, was like, yeah, fucking it's, hell. It's, it's ridiculous. But the Aberdeen, they built, a, I think Aberdeen is the biggest one I mean, well, Abu Dhabi is the last one on the do like we're done until Abu Dhabi in January, and I think that's an eighteen thousand seater. But I don't know if we're doing. I think it might be sectioned off. Yeah. I don't know if it's been done as the full eighteen. You know. Yeah. Selling well, but it's not sold out. Did you say something like he? How many Glasgow ones again? Sixteen by they, twelve. Yeah. So I I played. And they could have. They wanted to do. more? They wanted to do another ten. They were looking and like, <laughs> and that's just Glasgow and Aberdeen. You're you could have done Dundee. There's a place Edinburgh. There's you know there's venue like he, he's toured Scotland before. He'll probably tour Scotland again. There's something to be said about you know when when you're known as as a good stand up and then you take a little bit of a break and then you just come back and. Like I know he, you don't see him on podcasts or you don't see him doing he a bunch of shit. He just come out and be like, "I'm doing all of these gigs, and then I'll probably like, disappear again." I knew Kevin when he was started. I think 2006 in Edinburgh, I hosted a show and saw him. And at the time, you know, I've dropped names earlier, but like, you, you you knew everyone on the circuit. Yeah, you know, we all hung out. We, you know, you do a weekend. It was always like three or four nights of the weekend, so you got to know pretty much everybody. And I'm going, oh, I've never heard of this guy, and he's what is he, 26, 27. But he was only about 19 or 20, whatever he was. And I was like, oh, he just started. Like he was only going a few months. So I gave him numbers. says, ring these numbers for gigs in Ireland. Yeah. He's brilliant. And he did. And so we, like, I helped him at the very start. And I keep going, I don't know if I've been fully repaid yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> T a thousand times. Or like I was saying to him, so he's so far in credit with me. Like, you know, I'd be nearly, you know, he could do something heinous. And I go, um... Just don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, no, I, I I love him to bits. I think he's I think he's the best out there. I genuinely yeah, am. I, I'm meant to be, I'm obviously biased. But like, you know, I see someone like Bill Burr who, you know, uh, the specials, and I think Bill is, Bill Burr is brilliant in Kilkenny 2005. And uh, <laughs> I think Bill is, is amazing, but um, Kevin is still way younger. Yeah. Like, I mean, Kevin yeah. is 36 now, just since last month. 
and I'm thinking, I don't know the other. That's made me depressed. Seems yeah, to me. but you know, but you know what I mean. Even Mickey said he was 35 last night, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, I was going like they're just like Kevin, and Kevin's on his fifth arena tour. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like so he should be in the conversation. I know like Chappelle, Bill Hicks, but of the 50 whatever nights of we did with Kevin, I listened every night. Yeah, <clears throat> and I learned something. But he has that. that different thing where like. And maybe it works against him sometimes, but there there are classic bits. Like you, you could watch the latest Bill Burr and be like, "Yeah, it was great." Yeah, and you're yeah. Like there's nothing really like. There's a few. Uh, Bill, Bill Burr. I've always with found something with. I haven't seen his. I don't know. Is there a latest latest? The one in the Red London. Rocks. Do you see the Red Rocks? No, I haven't Rocks seen one? that one yet. No. It was it was badly produced. It was like not. It was hard to watch. You know, just whatever yeah. way they shot it. But the material was great. But I, yeah, used, was, I used to be so quick to seeing anything new yeah. and watching it, and now I'm like, oh, I'll get to it. Yeah, I, I never really do. Like I'd nearly go and watch Bill Hicks though. again now, just yeah. to kind of oh, just to get try and get that youthful joy I had in watching comedy again. Um, but Kevin, it was just it was a joy because you're going. If you know, if I wasn't such a fan, I'd have found it harder work. Yeah, you know, to listen every night. Um, <coughs> the, I'll, I'll tell you, the other support act tour I did. 11 years ago was Ed Byrne and the interesting point for me I, I think Ed is seriously underrated I don't, we don't want you in that conversation last night um, certainly in the Republic they don't for some reason you know he's massive in England everyone he's a brilliant mm. comic um, but we took Ed the, it was the point I'm making is Ed did a routine every night have you ever met a celebrity who offended you who upset you mm. and he'd get three stories every night so I did 30 something dates so nearly 100 stories of celebrities that Ed, that sorry, that the public met, that upset them, that were rude. Basically, if you met a okay. celebrity that was rude, and of the ninety odd, I'd say the hundred, I'd say there was ten that were genuinely where the celebrity was rude, and it was incredible. There was a woman, and uh, I met Jimmy Carr in Belfast, and Ed was like, "I know Jimmy now. Jimmy's a friend of mine. What happened? Well, he was walking down the road. I waved at him, and he didn't stop to talk to me." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you and it, it went from that to oh, like oh, my aunt went out with Lenny Henry when they were younger, and he goes, okay, what happened? He says, well, Lenny babysat me one night, and <laughs> Ed is gone, okay, and he goes, uh, I met him years later, and I asked him, did he remember my aunt and me? And he went, yeah, he did, and he yeah. going, but what's about the rude thing? Yeah. And just nobody, <laughs> and I, I was like, on. It was, but as a social experiment, I thought it was the maddest thing I've ever experienced from comedy. Nearly a hundred people, and genuinely, the one I won't say the name of the person, but the one that made me laugh of its rudeness was a famous comedian was asked, "Can you?" It was. I worked in a hotel, and this famous comedian was there, and I said, "Can I get an autograph?" And he go, he told me, "I'm doing a signing tomorrow. Can you come to that instead?" <laughs> But I'm here now. <laughs> um, I still don't think that's that rude. <laughs> but yeah, especially if someone's having a meal or something like yeah. that. There's a justification, and one mightn't be getting all the facts. But yeah, I'm doing a signing tomorrow. Can you come to that? <laughs> but I mean, no. But it fit the brief of what was being said by yeah. Ed when he was looking for the because he, he went into a routine about meeting this guy who was in a Star Trek movie um, and telling that story. But it was just, it was just an eye opener for audiences and their perception of. Um, like oh yeah, yeah, fame or? yeah, yeah, fame and possession of the person, like you know, there wasn't so much, there wasn't so much of it with Kevin. Like people would wait at the, the door, and he was, he was always, always great with people, you know, big pictures and stuff like that. But I've seen it with at festivals where, like, wives getting pushed out of the way, yeah, and you know, I'm a picture or, um, uh, oh, Ramesh Ranganathan came to one of the shows, and he was telling this, we were talking about this top topic, and. Uh, someone said to Ramesh, can I get a photo? And they went, yeah. And pointed at his wife and went, can she take it? <laughs> and it was like, you need to start, you know, yeah. just the thing, you know, well, first of all, we, let's start on manners. <laughs> yeah, know? I know. People are fucking... But it is, but it was weird, just that perception of people thing of, you know, or, they, or sometimes you laugh to the gig, the people who heckle and go, I thought that's what you wanted. I go, did you not when I shut oh, you up and told you to F off about three times. That's the worst. You know. He says, Oh, but I'm I'm with you on this. <laughs> Just helping you out a wee bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people don't even know what a heckle is. They genuinely don't. 
They genuinely don't. Like, you know, you're sort of like, you know, you wait for an opportune moment and you say something you say funny funnier line. than the comedian's going to say. The one, the one example I have, was, and I actually know the guy who did it. His name was Christy Bannon. He's a prison officer, so I'd have left him alone anyway. He, um, I used to do a joke about looking like uh, whoever it was at the time. I said, I look, no, I actually look like George Clooney or Johnny Depp or somebody, but I put on prosthetics and a fat suit <laughs> just so you women will listen to my jokes rather than being just laughing at how beautiful I am. <laughs> So it says, yeah, so I put the fat, when I was putting the fat suit on earlier and he goes, you weren't a bigger one than last time you were here. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. I laughed like that that night. I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, that is a perfect heckle. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know it was him at the time. I know Christy for years and uh, I didn't know who had said it. And I'm laughing my ass off. And it was perfect. And but because a good is heckle, so there is no comeback to a good heckle. No, it's it's it's, it's um, you, you will laugh at a good heckle. There was a guy. There was one from years ago. A uh, guy heckling somebody and goes, "Man, just so you know, the last guy to heckle me died three days later in nine eleven in one of the towers." And the guy shouts back up. I'll take my chances. You're shit. <laughs> <laughs> and again, perfect. Yeah. And, it, you know, if you can't leave as that comic with to tell that story, but I think it was told by other people in the room. But um, there's, there, there's just, yeah, there's, but there's so I rare. was bringing, bringing Mickey on it in Edinburgh one year and I was like, you got to love this guy. <laughs> he was like, for my money, the best comedian in Northern Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, so I went, Patrick Hilty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I had it the one that that cut me in two. I did the backyard in London, it was a great club. But Lee Hurst used to MC it. it was still one of the best MCs I've ever seen. It was unbelievable. Like right. he was amazing his own club and uh I hadn't done well. I'd done okay. Do you know one of those uh, I probably done enough to justify that I am a professional comedian. Yeah. Just got through my time. It ha they hadn't clicked with me hadn't connected and it just wasn't but I used to finish I had a line I used to finish with was if you want to know where else you can see me in London this weekend I would try a fast food restaurant or yeah. a lap dancing or, you know you add different tags different times and I so I'm wrapping up literally Mike's back in the stand if you want to know where else you can see me in London this weekend the guy goes not very likely mate <laughs> and I literally just like to, well yeah. <laughs> I was oh 24 hours of until I ripped the, that following gig yeah. they're the most important gigs you ever do as a comic the oh, day yeah. after back on the horse in the same room oh you you have to kill the, the fucking the worst it wasn't even a heckle but it was like early early days in Lavery's and I had I forget the bit but it was you know you get real quiet and get real dramatic and I just heard someone go does anyone have a number for a taxi <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't even mean it. Oh, so she good. didn't mean it, but I lit. I couldn't. I just that, had to stop the bit. I was like, "Well, oh, you were on it." Sorry, I was, it was you. Yeah, it was oh, me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and I was trying to. What was the fucking bit? I can't remember. But it was. Oh, it got very so quiet. And, you know, whatever. Waiting for this big change of direction. Does oh. anyone have a number for a taxi? Oh. And I just had to. I just had to stop the bit. I was like, "Well, I'm, I'll never my, pull this back." Ever. My, there was a uh, a comic told me a story. He, I said, you know, I always. In a green room with a, in, certainly back in the day, where have you been recently? Where are you going next? Who have you been on? You know, chatting away. And I said, oh, I was in Galway last week. And I was like, oh, this is 20 years ago. And I went, oh, who are you on? And he says, oh, there was a guy on. And uh, I won't say who because I've slagged Fred Cook enough today. And uh, <laughs> Fred was just after starting and he'd gone up and did an open spot and ripped it. So Jerry Mallon booked him for 20 minutes. So Fred had five, seven minutes. So he's doing 20. And yeah. Tried to stretch it, but it died in his arse. And uh, Fred, Jerry's, I love Jerry to bits. Jerry didn't say anything to it. It was all, you know, supportive in the dressing room. But Jerry goes back on and uh, he's chatting to the audience. Oh, you're a self there, love. Uh, what's your story? Who are you? And she goes, oh, I'm actually Fred's sister. All oh, right. Did he, uh, did he ever even say anything funny as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> And the guy, oh. the guy told me, and I went, oh my God, I'm on a mission now to find out who that was. I think I rang Jerry the following morning. Here, uh, who was that? Uh, I do an impression of Jerry when I ring. Um, <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, that's so perfect. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. There's no, there's, they're, 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 yeah, they're, 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 I used to, they're, they're love, you know, sometimes when it's, the, the, the comics are at the side or at the back, they used to be at the side in the comedy cellar and the international back in the day, they'd sit at the side table. So you could have a bit of interaction yeah. and a bit of back and forth. Some of those days they were like, they were, uh, 
they were horrific or you'd, you'd have a, you know, you'd slide and the, the person, the comic would hear you with no one else in the room, weren't you? But the, the famous one, oh, I don't know how famous one it was, uh, famous probably the wrong word, but the, the, the memorable one where two comics were sitting and the guy is up on stage and he's bra he's a bit new and he's not doing well and he's trying out bits and the lads are like, oh, oh Jesus, this is shit. Fucking hell. Oh, God. Uh, did you book him? Yeah, I know. Fuck it, blah, blah, blah. And your man comes off. How do you think it went? He went, oh, fine, fine, great. I recorded it there. <laughs> <laughs> Fix up his recorder from the table in front of the lads. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they're literally looking at it going, oh, fuck, how good is the mic on that? It's oh. just like, you know, and they go, are our voices that recognisable? It was just, oh, there was fucking... <sighs> God. There was, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, but those stories, the guys that used to be open mics, there was a guy that was an open spot for like 16 years when I started. He'd been in, since comedy started, he'd been an open spot. And I'm like, why don't you just give up? Like, you know, why doesn't he give up? Yeah, there's a few he people goes, like he that. He just wants to say he's still a comedian. Well, that's just, it. Yeah. And he'd go on and he'd do, like he, you know, and he'd come off and you think, God, that was terrible. And he'd go, oh, that went well tonight. Now that's a good one. Yeah, and you just go, oh my god, oh my god. People just keep one toe still in yeah. it. Just I'm like still, I'm there's still. I could even it gets less and less. The debts, you know, I'm as I said, 23 years now in April, I'll be gone. So, you know, in the last few years, you have less shit, hor horrendous gigs, yeah. but boy, did they stay with you. Like, yeah, oh, there's ones that just, oh, like it was, it's about five years ago now, four years ago, Bundoran, and there was one like Barry oh, Murphy was there. Still, say no more. Still, still <laughs> reminds me of it. I actually went back this year and did a gig in Bundoran. It went really well. And I felt I'd cleansed it a little bit. Um, Grey Stones Golf Club. I did, it, it's so bad. Now, at the time I thought, ah, they're just not going with the comedy. But I think two years later, um, Barry Murphy was doing it and he knew I'd had a bad gig. And they wouldn't shut up. So he was trying to bring somebody on or something. And he goes, come on, be quiet. If you don't shut up, I'll bring Carl Spain back next year. <laughs> <laughs> and they all went quiet. <laughs> the only gig I ever done in Von Doren was, I think, Mickey. Was it me and Mickey? He's like, this guy booked me for a stag do. Oh. Day two of a stag do. Do you want to go up and do like a private gig for them? And I was like, sure. And we went up and it was this tiny little like, boardroom of a hotel that they put like 30 guys into and one guy was lying across three seats <sighs> asleep and these boys were just didn't give a fuck at all and I, I can't remember what bed I was doing and I was just halfway through it and this the guy who was asleep just no farted oh. <laughs> just farted over everybody and that <sighs> fucking brought the house down of course and I was just like right okay I'm Not a ventriloquist yeah <laughs> <laughs> As if I didn't stink the room. I, I, I went Christ. on Kevin McGarhan's stag a few years ago and I couldn't do the first night, but I think we paid, you kind of paid for two nights in the hotel. So I would suddenly find him sharing a room. I think it was one of his brothers was in the room and his brother-in-law or something like that. So three single beds. So I don't drink. So they were all in the bed the following morning. So I wake up and you're just facing and then I see the brother-in-law is just in his boxers lying on top of the bed but he starts scratching his arse in the morning and turning around. But I tend to turn a couple of times during the night, so I have to keep turning back and then he's scratching his arse and I'm like, for fuck's sake. And I get up to leave then, I'm driving back to Limerick. I said, anyway, nice to meet you. And he goes, oh, lovely to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off with that hand. <laughs> Give him the old fucking bars. Fuck off, go away. And he was like, what? He says, I've been watching you scratching your arse all morning, for fuck's sake, fucking <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> and I barely met the guy. No, it was, it was it was actually probably the best stag I was ever on. Kevin made up a rumor. That's it. That's the other thing I love doing is the rumor thing. Um, this used to be oh, like just make up a lie and see if you ever hear it back. But uh, Kevin made up. We we went doing the clay pigeon shooting. But Kevin on television told the story of a rabid dog that had been left by a circus attacked us. But that Carl Spain stepped forward and shot the ground in front of it and it ran away. And it said that dog is famous in Sligo and totally made up telling the story. And now I, I can't, I made up some story about him then on something to tell it. But we used to do it with just celebrities. You'd make up a, a believable fact. Mm -hmm. So the one that I did, that, that people said to me like years later uh, was that Sarah Jessica Parker is twins and that it was Sarah and Jessica were the actors as kids. But one of them stopped being an actor. But because the names were out there, she kept both names. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So either Sarah or Jessica had to change her name, and she looks exactly like Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> so she's not. She's not even. She's not. And it's just totally made up, right? That's probably because Sarah, there was probably ten Sarah Parkers registered yeah. as actors. But it, if you just make it a little bit believable, and you say it in the dress room, there'll be three or four people who go, "Oh, that's Matt," and then the, you know, yeah. Two of them will go, that's bullshit. What are you talking it's about? It's so ra- specific and random. That just, like, yeah, just a like, random. Why would you make it up? Did you know that? And then they'll think you did, like, the ones that find out afterwards it's complete bullshit think you're the idiot that you went, can't believe you believed that. I'm after finding that out two years later. No, you believed it for two years. There's a, there's a few, you just make up, just, just, oh yeah, do you not know that? And you go, oh yeah, and you kind of go in your head, you go, that sounds plausible. <laughs> that's the name of the podcast. Rumours. Rumours or is it? Before we get out of here Tell us where you're playing You got gigs coming oh, up Oh shit yeah Plug I'm, them up Yeah I'm in the March is it 9th, 10th and 11th Or 11th, 10th and 12th You tell me That was, a, that was a nice uh, strategic plan Wasn't it Get the, the Kevin Bridges gigs done Yeah Oh totally yeah, Like you, that You'd be surprised I'll be back You'd be surprised how If I wasn't doing the Kevin Bridges gigs These shows would not have what? happened <laughs> Um, it's a great way to showcase yourself. March tenth, the Riverside Coal Rain. Oh, that's that's uh, uh, nice. And uh, the Derry, the Nerve Centre, the nerve of going to Derry. Nice. Um, the eleventh of March, and then the Limelight, the second one in the Limelight, because the first one sold out on the twelfth of March, um, which is uh, the big one, the Limelight one. Limelight one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's look, a, look at me. That's look a at big me. Gig. Or if you're in Drogheda, or uh, all over Ireland. The island of Ireland. I love playing Derry, hey? Because I'm from Limerick and it's another city beginning with L. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> I was thinking that last night. It actually happened. There was someone in Let- from Letterkenny and from Derry. Right. And I did it in, Der- in Letterkenny one night. There was a load in from Derry. A load of lads in. They're kind of rough lads that kind of look like they could be gay, but they're, they're just rough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they had the shaved heads and earrings. And you kind of go, gay or tough? I don't know. Or both. But um, they were down and they were fucking loud and mouthing off. And I said, oh, I'm from Limerick. And it was a guy from London in. So the other comic had been from London. So London, Limerick, Letterkenny. And, every- and I went, and you're from Derry. Everyone's from somewhere beginning with L. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then you don't have to ask which side you're from. Yeah. <laughs> you no, up well, thanks so much for coming in. Always a oh, pleasure. I'll we'll we'll do it again. I've come to this industrial estate before. Yeah. <laughs> Not for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> for a collection. Yeah. Right. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks a million. Thanks. Uh, anytime I'm in Belfast, I always come on this podcast. Yeah. The drilling. Welcome. Let the drilling begin. Right, right here. Cheers. That's brilliant. I'm going to absolutely piss myself. <laughs>